What's poppin' Royal Roses? It's your girl Rosie. And I'm back today with another video. Jeez, I'm back today with another video. Today I'm going to be doing a story time on when I was in a domestic violence relationship. If you're new to my page, stick around, hear what I got to say. If you like it, then go ahead and subscribe down below. Hit the bell for post notifications so you can be notified every time I upload. If you're already subscribed to my channel, welcome back and thank you so much. Why is my camera doing that? That's weird. Give me a second, y'all. Okay, it was doing that because of TV. That's what I thought. All right. Let's well, see. So yeah, I'm going to be doing a story time on the time I was in a domestic, ugh, a domestic violence relationship. How I left and the effects it had on me. Um, so when I was 18 and a half years old, I met a 26-year-old man. Back then, I'm like, oh, I've never messed with an older dude. So it was exciting to me. I'm not going to lie. We met on the bus. Um, he was with his friend. One of the red signs I missed automatically, which I should have been like, nope, it's a no, is he was actually on a GPS monitor, which tracks his whereabouts, and he was on an ankle, I mean, an uh, alcohol bracelet as well, which tests you every 30 minutes to see if you have alcohol in your system. Um Yes, yeah, so we met, we started dating really quick, actually, to be honest, we did start dating really, really quick. So we started dating on March 9th, 2012. Um, <clears throat> things were good. He, we were together for almost three, almost four weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, it was a week until a month after we started messing around. And he had caught a PV, which is a probation, a pro violation. Um, and that was in April. He had caught a probation violation. So he did four months in county for the PV. While he was in jail, you guys, I, he literally had a letter from me every single day. Day, you guys every single day I was writing him a letter and sending it out every day he was able to call how many ever times he wanted and I was able to answer because I was putting money on the phone I was putting money on his books all of that okay so the four months goes by he gets out things are still pretty good I guess I mean of course when someone's in jail and you're dating them things are usually pretty good you know what I mean of course jail talk duh Okay, so he gets out, and I find out that the girl he was messing with before me, she was in jail at the same time. Well, they were passing notes back and forth, and he proposed to her. So now we're dealing with infidelity. You're weird. I don't fuck with it. Like, that's weird. So, of course, I bring it up, and then it, there's a few other girls that come up. We work it out. Um. So between... August, the ending of August 2012 until January 2013, there was a lot of infidelity on his end. Um, so we broke up for a month and we broke up for a month in January of 2013. He went back to his mom's house and I was doing my own thing. Turning up with my friends, you know what I mean? Like, straight partying. I'm talking to a dude a little bit on the side. You're talking to all type of females. We link back up on Valentine's Day 2013, you guys. Um, and we get right back to it. Now, he's insecure. He's jealous. You're talking to other guys. You was dating another guy when we were broken up. Let me have your Facebook password. I'm like, okay, I don't care. He turns around and he changes my Facebook password. So he's the only one with access to it. Um, his jealousy kicks in then. And his insecurities kick in then. Which don't make sense because it's like I was just talking to another guy. You are smashing multiple females. You know what I mean? That don't make sense. 
So the ending of February, the last week of February was the first time he ever put his hands on me of 2013. Um, I wanted to go home. He was drunk and being an asshole. When he gets drunk, like, he he got bipolar issues. Like, the littlest thing can make him snap. But, like, I just knew, like, when you're this drunk, you're an asshole. I want to go home. Well, he slapped me. And I fell on the couch. Uh, then he snatched my purse and my wallet. And he's like, you're not going nowhere. I'm keeping this, so you're not going to go nowhere. So... I stayed around, and I waited until he fell asleep, and I went home. Didn't tell nobody about it. Um, yeah, so between February of 2013 and February of 2014, so between the first time he hit me and a year later, things had escalated very, very quickly, like very quickly, you guys. Um I constantly had black eyes. I was getting slapped. I was getting punched. There was still the infidelity. Like, I was getting kicked in the face. I was being spit on. I was being humiliated. You was doing this in front of people. Like, you guys. For example, one time, um, he had found out that possibly he had a child from before we were together. So he was always linking up with the girl. And it just got to like. Bro you guys are always together. And when you guys aren't together. You guys are always on the phone. And you're not talking about the baby. So like I, I had, had an attitude about it. Like are you serious dude? Like so he got mad. And wanted to fight me. And he punched me in the face. And I fell. And I hit the ground. And his he has a cousin that was supposed to be my best friend. He was there when this happened as well. Um, and when I hit the ground, he stomped my face three times, stomped on my face three times with shoes on. Um, I remember another time, I'm not sure why he did it, but he punched me in my eye. And you guys, it was legit swollen to like out here. Look right there. I'm trying to see. Yeah, like right there. And it was black and blue. I lied and said I got jumped at the bus stop even though I didn't. Uh, freaking whole bunch of infidelity. Yeah, it was a constant cycle of either getting punched or slapped for the littlest things. Um, early June 2014, you guys. So he got me put out my mom's house because she was over the disrespect, which is understandable. Back then it was hurtful, but it's understandable. You know what I mean? Um, so we were living with his godmom and his mom. And he, sorry, I skipped one really important thing. Um, February 2014, you guys. His birthday is February 28th, so it was his birthday, and we was living with his godmom and his mom, and his godmom's husband was a recovering alcoholic, so I didn't want no drinking, no partying, nothing there, you know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, well, we're homeless. I'm going to figure out a way to turn up. There was this guy. He wanted to pay me $200, just go to the strip club, and let him watch his favorite stripper give me a lap dance. Now, he was supposed to be coming with, along with his cousin. I said that they both were my cousins, and I'm like, it's my cousin's birthday, you know, so they just want to come along. The guy was like, okay, they can. not We get to the guy where he's at, and they're just being drunk and belligerent, and he's like, they're not going to let him in the club. It's an 18 and up club, a juice bar. So they don't serve alcohol because it's 18 and up. You know what I mean? They're not going to let them in. Okay, they're cool with that. Well, when I get done doing that, he's blowing me up, talking shit, accusing me of, you know, having sexual intercourse with the guy. I'm like, I'm on my way back. I'll be there in 15 minutes. We're supposed to get a room, a motel room and, you know, have fun for your birthday or whatever. So I hit him up when I get with his cousin's girlfriend. I went over there so we can buy some weed, um, you know, so we can smoke and then I can have weed for when we go to the room or whatever. 
Well, he comes in belligerent. He fucking punches me like, you guys, he literally just came in belligerent. I was sitting on the bed. Her son, who was four at the time, was sitting behind me. And he just came in and he punched me right here. This scar. Oh, I got makeup right there. This scar and then right there, there's another scar. It's split open. And I remember looking down like this, you guys. Look down like this, and there's a bunch of blood coming up, and I'm like, what the f coming down? I'm like, what the fuck? So I go in her bathroom so I don't get it all over her carpet. And I remember as I'm looking down, I call his mom, and I'm like, he just busted my head. Um, there's I'm losing chunks of my lip because from my mouth, there was like square chunks of blood coming out. And at the time, I thought it was literally coming from my mouth. My nose was busted. Um, I didn't want to call the ambulance because I didn't want the police to come. Here in Oregon, if a child, even if it's not your child, is involved while there's a domestic violence situation going on, then they do open a CPS case. And I didn't want this girl to have a CPS case because she didn't have nothing to do with it. So he comes back in. <clears throat> he sends his cousin in. And he's like, just give him the money, Rosie. Just give him the money so he can leave. Um, I said, I'll give him enough to get a room. I gave him $50, you guys. That was enough to get a motel room. And he runs back in there. No, bitch, you're going to give it all to me. You're going to give it all to me. Like I said, we were staying with his mom and his godmom. So I had his mom's boots on and um, her jeans on. He made me take those off, you guys. I had to wear his cousin's girlfriend's clothes to go to the hospital. I didn't want to call the ambulance because, like I said, I didn't want her to have a um uh, an open CPS case because of my situation. Um, so I tried to call a medical cab to get there, and they're like, it's only if um, you could only send a medical cab. This is harder to talk about, you guys, than I thought. You could only send a medical cab if you have a doctor's appointment. So I walked up two blocks and I got on the max. That's public transportation here. It's the train, you guys. Um, I had to go four stops. I remember I walked to the max stop. I don't really remember walking there, but I know I did. Uh, then I remember getting on the max and four max stops. That's only about seven, eight minutes. I remember going in and out of consciousness with a group of teenagers sitting across from me laughing like, oh, she got beat up. She got beat up. And I remember going in and out of consciousness. So I remember getting off the max. And the next thing I remember is sitting in the waiting room of the hospital for what felt like hours, you guys. Hours. And those doctors knew that I wasn't telling the truth about what happened, you guys. I still loved him back then. I didn't want him to go to jail. So, of course, I covered I said, I went to a party and a fight broke out and everybody just started fighting and I got hit with something. They knew I was lying, you guys. They kept asking me. They knew I was lying. Um, yeah. So, June 2014, I got pregnant with my daughter. Um. Uh, the way I found out I was pregnant with her, you guys, was I had got a rash that looked like a wingworm on my knee. And it itched a lot and it was like scalping up, you know what I mean? Like scabby, but it the skin didn't break. So I had went to the doctors and they told me what it was and I'm like, okay, well, the medicine we need to give you, is it possible you're pregnant? And I'm like... I don't think so, but it is possible because I am having unprotected sex. He goes outside to smoke a cigarette, you guys. Give me a second. Now, this is something I've never told anyone.
<coughs> All right, y'all. So he went outside to smoke a cigarette, and the doctor came back in, and she's like, "You're pregnant. Congratulations." She gives me a paper, a little paper, and I go out there um, to the thing, and I tell him I'm pregnant. He stands up there with me while I make my next appointment, which was for the following week. I believe I went on a Thursday or Friday the first day because it was only about three or four days until I had my first prenatal appointment, which I know was the beginning of the next week. Um, anyways, so we call her, break, we tell him I'm pregnant, ooh, 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 ooh. okay, we get home, he gets to drinking, and he's like, you're lying about being pregnant. I wasn't back there, I didn't hear them say you're pregnant, um. And I'm like, what the fuck? I have an appointment. For some reason, I'm wanting to stay a Thursday, a Wednesday, but that's not going to make sense. I'm like, I have an appointment on that day, and we'll just go and find out. And he got mad and punched me in my face. And I went flying back onto the couch. And that time, it was so different for me. He put his hands on me so many times, you guys. But that time, it was so different because it was like, I'm pregnant with your child. Even if you don't believe me that I'm pregnant, like, I'm saying I'm pregnant and you're hitting me. But I knew for a fact I was pregnant because why am I going to lie about that? You know what I mean? Like, the doctor just told me I had a positive pregnancy test. So, I'm like, damn, you're endangering our, our child already. So, it hit different. You know what I mean? Um... That was the only time he had hit me while I was pregnant. During my pregnancy, I dealt with a lot of mental abuse, though. I did. But I was worthless. I wasn't going to be a good mom. A whole bunch of things. Um, so, yeah. I had my daughter March 2015. I started to suspect on when I was still pregnant. So, February 2015, you guys. Um, he ran into an old friend of his, and his friend was very open about being on drugs. Okay. It was his birthday. I wanted to spend time with him. He went and spent his whole birthday with this person. Okay, fine. Dandy, whatever, I guess. He comes home and has a big circle. Where I'm like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Oh, his baby mom walked in and didn't want him to know, uh, her to know that he's on drugs. So he passed me the hot pipe and that was the end I grabbed. I feel like you're on drugs, you're lying. Like, I'm not taking the blame for nobody's mess pipe. Not me. Just me though, okay? Um... So I had my baby March 2015. He got sober. It was a lot of mental abuse. He was really mentally abusive. Like, I don't deserve to be a mom. He wasn't the dad. He wanted a DNA test. Like, he did a was really verbally abusive, you guys. Very. Until September 2015. Which, um, we had lost our place, me and my mom, so we moved in with his mom, and that's where the turning point was. I mean, after I had, so my first Mother's Day, which is May 2015, he ruined it, you guys. He told me I was a horrible mom. He won the DNA test. He took all the presents. He bought me and destroyed them, like, and I, I was just like. I don't even want to do this. I'm not getting help with my child. Like, I don't... I, that's my mindset for the longest. And so I left and was like, I don't even want to do this no more, you know? I just need to figure out what I'm going to do for me and my child. So September 2015, we move in with his mom because we lost our place. Um, Between September and October, it was a lot of verbal abuse. Um, 
He started cheating immediately when we went over there. I was there from September to December. And there were seven different girls that popped up in that time frame. So he was always in the streets. He wasn't helping, but when he was uh, when he was around, like, it was verbal abuse. He would just come in and walk past the baby like she wasn't there, you know. Um, so October 15th, 2015, I had did singles in his hair, and I wanted him just to chill with me and the baby, you know. Um, and I picked her up so I could make her a bottle. And we got to arguing, so I'm like, you always want to go kick it. And he backhanded me while I was holding our baby, who was only seven months old at the time. And my nose just started gushing. And I let him leave. I didn't even argue no more. Just go. And when he did, I grabbed a bag full of stuff, and I left. And I went and got a domestic violence grant. I... I did go back to him October on Halloween that year. Um, I'm, where we were at, it was like my daughter couldn't play and be a baby because the person worked at nighttime, so they wanted it to be super, super quiet, you know. So I went back there because I felt like, let me just go there until I could find something that's going to work. Because I had nowhere to take her. I didn't want my child to be homeless. Um, so I went back to him. Now between Halloween and December 26, 2015, you guys, I found three meth pipes. Three meth pipes. And it was like the physical abuse was starting to get there again. You was always wanting to start an argument, beat me up, and then go be with the girls in the apartments. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 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 So, I went back there. And at that point, it was just like, after I found the pipes, it was just like, Rosie, you you really need to sit down and find out what you're going to do for your child. I knew at that point in time, like, this relationship is done. I don't want nothing from this relationship. I just need to stay here long enough so I can figure out where I'm going to go with my baby. His mom and his sister, because that's whose house it was, told me I was paying them $200 for rent told me as long as you just keep paying rent you can stay here until you figure out what you want to do um they encouraged me to leave him you guys just to turn their back on me when I did but they encouraged me to leave him and was like you can stay here until you you know figure out what you're gonna do that shit went left too my breaking point like my breaking point that really, really, like, my breaking point, you guys, when I got to my breaking point, I didn't have a plan. I'm not going to lie. I had lost my job. I didn't have a plan. I had a nine-month-old baby by myself. My mom is always my go-to, but we lost our place. Like, she was homeless. Like, where was I going to go? But my breaking point where it was just like, I don't care about none of that. I will figure out a way one way or another. Like, my baby's going to be good, but we got to get out of here. My breaking point, you guys, in December, a few days before Christmas, he pointed a gun at me. He got his, his sister's boyfriend's pistol, and he cocked it back, and he pointed it right here. Told me. Bitch, if I can't have you, nobody will. And that scared me, you guys. It scared me because I really thought he was going to kill me. Like, I almost died from me busting my forehead. Now you have a whole pistol and you're cocking it back. Like, I believe what you say. Like, I feel like you're going to kill me. I have to get out of here. Um, and a few days after that, you guys... 11 o'clock at night, I grabbed a few bags I could. I grabbed my baby car seat, her stroller, called a cab, and I left, and I never looked back. 
I never looked back, you guys. And I'm so thankful that I didn't. I'm so thankful. Like, to this day, he still begs me like I want to be with you. Like, when he sees me and shit by myself, he'll be like, oh, I miss you. I want to be with you if I get my shit together. Like, but no, baby. That course, been ran. It is what it is. Um, yeah. Also, you guys, what it took for me to leave him, like, men and women get abused in relationships. And it typically takes seven times for the person being abused to leave and not come back. Um, I was scared to leave him for the longest. Because he would threaten to harm my family. He would be like, oh, I'm going to take our baby and run to Seattle. And since he signed her birth certificate, like, he can legally do that. You know what I mean? Um, and those were just some fears of mine. It was some fears of mine. Finally got to a point, though, you guys. Like, I realized I deserve better. I don't deserve to be hit for no reason. Like, I don't deserve to be hit at all. That's not healthy in a relationship. That's so toxic. I came to a point to realize I deserved better. I realized my worth. I was tired of being embarrassed. And most importantly, I didn't want my daughter to grow up and see him beating me and think it's okay for a man when she's grown to beat her um, when I left him you guys he he was sitting outside my grandma's house he was sitting outside my brother's house he actually showed up to my brother's house with two other guys with pistols looking for me the days after I left him um, which really scared me so after I had heard that I made a Facebook status because I had a bunch of his people on my Facebook and I was just like bye bye Portland hello Los Angeles and I tagged the airport like I was at the airport and I didn't speak to him we didn't have no contact for seven months when he found himself trying to call the man that my baby don't happy, I mean, happy Father's Day, like, no. <sighs> um, coming out of that relationship, you guys, I seeked therapy. I did because even though I was being abused, I felt like I had to be able to defend myself. I had got some toxic traits. That I had to work out. You know what I mean? I had became toxic in a sense. But that was from having to defend myself. Um, and I had got diagnosed with severe anxiety, PTSD, and depression. Um, and those are things that still mess with me. Like, if I hear something slam or someone throw some, I jump. Because when I used to hear that, that would be right before I got punched. You know what I mean? I don't like people making any movements towards my throne. It gives me flashbacks of when he used to choke me out. And it, it gives me flashbacks. Then times he used to choke me out and I could feel myself almost passing out. It gave me low self-esteem, you guys. Like, I felt he made me, he, he degraded me so much. He would tell me how ugly I was. How nobody would ever want me. I wasn't worthy. Um, I'm real doubtful of myself. I still have flashbacks, like I said. I still hear the things he would say to me. When we got into it. Yeah, you guys. 
that is my story time on when I was a domestic violent in a domestic violence relationship. Something I do want to say. I typed this out so I wouldn't forget it, you guys. Uh, if you're going through domestic violence, you guys, please, please, please find a way out. Whether you have to call the police, if you have to call the domestic violence hotline, if you have to make a plan, like, one night when they're gone, just getting all your stuff and leaving as fast as you can. If you, if you got to do it. Domestic violence is real, you guys. There's a lot of people out here losing their life to domestic violence. And it, it never it never gets better. It only gets worse, you guys. Um, if anybody is currently experienced domestic violence, experiencing domestic violence and you feel like you have nobody to talk to then you can reach out to me my instagram is royal.rosy93 i will post it in the comments down below so you guys can hit me sorry you guys my phone stopped recording um yeah but my instagram is royal.rosy93 you guys can dm me if you guys just want someone to listen to um, you, if you want advice, if you need help, if you need resources, feel more than welcome to reach out to me and I will help you guys the best I can. If you're still here watching, thank you so very much. If you're not already subscribed and you liked what you hear or you want to hear more, then go ahead and subscribe down below. Hit the bell for post notifications so you can be notified every time I upload. If you're already on, um, subscribed to my channel, thank you so much for watching and supporting. And I am out until next time.